Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, all week we've been talking about how to behave yourself in the house of God. And our text is from 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse, actually verse 15, you know, 14 and 15. But verse 15 says, But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church and the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth. The church, the household of God. The local assembly, see? Or uh, it can be a local assembly, it can be a cell group, it can be whatever, you know, wherever you are. You know, that, that community of believers, people who believe in Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about. Then, you know, he said, I write these things to you so that you will know. So we're talking about what are the things he wrote? And then we're looking at some of them. And we talked about the pastor, you know, that was the bishop from verse 1. And then now we get to verse 8. Notice in verse 8, it says, Likewise, deacons must be reverent. So he's done with talking about the pastors now. Now he's talking about the deacons and the church. Now who are the deacons in the church? See, he's talking about the, 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 those who handle stuff in church. The head of department, the head of the ushers, the head of the uh, whatever. You know, people who are given assignment to do in church. Remember when the church began to increase and there was a bit of um, argument and, and confusion. The disciples came together and said, Lord, what do we do? They said, okay, let's anoint seven men. Now, those seven men to do what? To serve tables. See? They, they said, let's anoint seven men to serve tables. Now, but look at the quality of men they chose. They let's anoint men who are full of the Holy Ghost and faith. So they didn't just say, okay, this brother. Mm, you know, how, you know, you know it's, it's amazing how people think sometimes. You look at a brother and say, this one is a prayer, prayer brother. Let him handle the prayer department. This one doesn't know how to pray. Let him handle ushering. <laughs> it's the prayer brother that is supposed to handle the ushering. Are you getting what I'm saying? He, everybody that handles things in the house of God, number one, must be full of the Holy Ghost. Now, when I say full of the Holy Ghost, he, the scripture is not talking about he can speak in tongues. No, he's someone we have known that this brother, this sister, anything she does, his spirit said, spirit said, no, he says, spirit coco. That's what we call them. Yes, they are the ones that should handle issues in church. They are the ones that should head of head of your department. They are the ones that should be head of welfare. So that when someone is coming to lie to collect money in the church, she will pick it up in the realm of the spirit. See? He, 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 someone like that has to handle follow up full of the Holy Ghost so that he will sense as his visiting brother just like Barnabas he sensed that Paul had a calling on his life he picked him up Paul did, the Bible never said um, Barnabas was in charge of any church group but you see he was the one that located Paul and brought him to the disciples and that's how Paul became popular see so everyone must be full of the Holy Ghost. That is number... Well, if it is not full of the Holy Ghost, then he's not even a member of the church in the first place. Because you don't say, oh, this is a businessman. He's, he's done well in the business arena. So let him come and handle our, you know, something department so that he will teach me. What is he going to teach them? Is he full of the Holy Ghost? The operations of the world is not the same operation with the church. Don't combine them together. If not, your church would just turn to the world. You will not know it now until years after. So watch this. So he's talking about the deacons. So likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not giving too much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. Did you see that? He's holding the mystery of the faith so there is something deep and spiritual about these people. Holding the mystery of the faith with what? A pure conscience. Not the one who's using faith to conjure others to give him money. No. There's a pureness in his heart. He's walking by faith true and true. He believes God. So you see, one who believes God to meet his needs cannot steal. He can't steal church money. <laughs> so he can handle the finances of the church and will never steal the church money because he is living by faith. Watch this. Now look at verse 10. But let these also be te first tested. So don't just assume. Test them. Someone is friends with you. Test him. Is this guy really a man of faith? I want to know. 
Does he really live by faith? I want to know. How does this man respond to the word of God? I want to know. That's why he says, let this also be first tested. Then, let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Now he goes on to talk about the wife. Say, likewise, the wife must be reverent, not slanderous, temperate, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling his children and their house well. Now look at verse 30. He says, for those who have served well as deacons, obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Listen. Don't just submit yourself to anybody. I'm talking to you as a child of God. Don't submit yourself to just anybody. Don't just say because someone is a pastor, he has a right to come and tell you anything and you answer. I say, yes, sir, because he's a pastor. You know, someone walks into your house and says, oh, because I'm a pastor, I want to sleep with you. Say, you know, I have pastoral anointing. Say, oh, what will I do now? He's a pastor. Huh? Pastoring from where? Don't say because someone is a buyer comes to you and say, oh, give me all your money because uh, thus says the Lord. Has the Lord said it does to you? Be smart. We live in, 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 in a wicked world. We live in the evil day. But you ought to be smart. But say, be smart as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, I, I've heard you. But let me take time to ask the Lord and pray about it. Simple. You didn't say no. You didn't say yes. Let me just pray about it. Praise God. Today is Friday. And I want to bless God for your weekend. Think on these things. What I've shared with you all week, think on them. And I pray as you go through this study, you know, actually read from chapter 1 to know everything he said. And I pray that the Spirit of God will open your understanding. And let this weekend be a time of revelation and truth for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Atuba Judge. Until next week. Now we have something coming up very soon. I'm going to talk to you about it next week. Praise God. God bless you. Bye-bye.